Hello everyone, welcome to the first of our series of Craft Beer and Data. My name is Nick Piet, I'm the Director of Evangelism here at Talent. Uh, and to my left here is my co-host Mark Balkanende, the Technical Director of Product Marketing as well. So, just to kind of give you a sense, it's a brand new series that we're putting out. Um, thank you Talent and actually Denver Beer Co. for hosting this first session. But uh, what to kind of get as a sense of what you're going to get out of these first couple presentations is, you know, why data? Why beer? You know, how can we look at things from a vertical aspect like healthcare, uh, agriculture, smart cities, and then even to some of the deeper things like how to handle spark streaming or when to use Apache Beam or things like that. So we're really excited to have the opportunity to talk to you guys about this type of stuff um, and combining our favorite passions of, of beer and, and data. Absolutely, Nick. Happy to be here and glad you asked me because I both like data and beer. Yeah, so right. I'm very excited. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, as we were starting to put this this idea together over a number of beers at our sales kickoff, um, the idea of just these two groups of, you know, craft beer and, and really the innovations that we're seeing in data, they, they have similar roots and kind of kindred spirits and how this kind of is created, right? I mean, how many stories have you heard of hey, this was created in my basement or in my garage. They exactly. apply both. And yeah, I mean, I think that's a great opportunity for us to, to pull two really similar groups together and talk about this stuff. Definitely. Perfect. So, so where should we start, Nick? Yeah, you know, I think a great way to start is just what does big data, How what does data mean to us, right? What are we seeing? How's that work? So, yeah, well, you mentioned big data. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's something everybody talks about nowadays, and you know, it seems so mainstream, but there's still so many people that are like, "What is big data mean?" And you know, and, and you know, I, I kind of see big data classified in two different worlds when it comes to the technology. You know, when you talk about the big data and the technology around, one is the Hadoop, and, you know, our inf you know, architecture and infrastructure. So you, know, you have the Apache Hadoop, and you have MapReduce, and Spark, and so many other things coming up. And then you also have the NoSQL world, yeah, uh, which is you know kind of the two sides of the big data world. So you know, that's kind of how I define when people talk about big data. That's what I that's what I think. Of. Yeah, no, I mean I think that's a great um, summation of what kind of the challenges that we're seeing right now. You know, I, I mean I, I look at it with the customers that we spent some time with that like, you know, it's just data. Right. Yeah. I mean, having big to it, great. But I mean, in the sense of like, you know, some, uh, you know, an IBM's small data could be a <laughs> telco's big data, right? Absolutely. I mean, so it, it's you know fundamentally just this new paradigm of how to handle data processing, and it's very fascinating of what people are doing with it. I, I think to add to that too, Nick, is is it's it's not necessarily the size of the data either, but it's also the structure, because one thing that the big data platforms are really good at is being able to process a lot of the um, unstructured, the data that you wouldn't normally think about putting into your relational database, or data that's coming out of your traditional CRMs and ERSPs. So, you know, that that's another thing that these platforms are really good at, that, yeah. that the traditional data processing systems, you know, have, have struggled to be, you know, catch up on. So. That's also something that I think we'll highlight a lot in this blog series is, is what kind of data are, are people working with and processing today? Oh yeah, no, there's no question. I mean, you know, just anywhere from information from Twitter to traditional CRMs to even hearing the other day just customers, partners working on collecting video data and pushing it through. It's just so many fascinating ways of handling this data. So, all right. so. We kind of talked about what we want, but I, I and I think we've kind of touched on a little bit. What, what, like, you know, we, where is this coming from? How is this changing? It just seems like overnight, uh, the way that companies were processing and handling this data has just changed. It, it really, you know, if you think about the world of processing, it really has. And you know, just a few years ago, this whole big data concept and these clusters of Hadoop were were just a kind of a lab experiment in a lot of enterprises and you know three four years down the road to today you know these big data clusters these to do clusters are becoming mainstream they're they're starting to become a, just a norm in a lot of these big enterprises that we work with today and that so that's really the difference is, is they're starting to get away from these you know expensive compliance multi-processing you know platforms and moving into more of the open source you know, distro based you know Hadoop processing and that is where you know, what we see the trend and uh, you know with our customers today is it's no longer an experiment but it's it's becoming a norm interesting yeah I mean it's 
a couple pieces that you mentioned. I it's almost it's almost like how craft beer is now a norm in, in Colorado in general. That is very true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, where so as Just Mark draw mentioned, parallels. Well, yeah, I like it. No, I'm fair point. As Mark kind of mentioned, we are out based out in Denver. Um, it, it's wonderful out here. It's kind of like the Starbucks of Denver. There's a craft beer place every point, which uh, means that as we go through the series, not only we'll be talking about new types of data points or, or architectures or use cases, we'll also be going and visiting a bunch of different craft breweries. So if you're a craft brewery watching this and you're interested in hosting us, please let us know. We'd love to be there. Um, not again, just in Denver either. Right, yeah, not just in Denver either. Um, but we certainly appreciate the guys here at Denver Beer Company for letting us set up and cast off our first meeting. So so you, you kind of mentioned, you know, enterprises and companies that shift to it, but like there's some history behind this. Like, I mean, it's it's been around since uh, 2005. Right, you know, when I, I was graduating high school. Oh, wow, lucky you. <laughs> uh, you're showing your age, he's showing his age. Now. Um, I'm showing my age. But uh, yeah, in 2005, it was founded as an Apache license uh, from a gentleman at Yahoo. And, you know, companies like Yahoo and Google were having this issue. They had so much data. And it was a lot of unstructured data, log data, and things like that, that they needed a process that they just couldn't handle in the hmm. traditional appliance world. And so they sat down and came up with, you know, Hadoop and, and MapReduce and a resource manager and yarn and things like that. So you know, that's kind of the birth of, of it was from these large, you know, internet companies. But now it's starting to filter down into enterprises of all nature and all sizes. How can they solve and come up with better solutions faster using this open source solutions with their data, no matter yep. what the data is? No, it's a very valid point. I mean, it's it's fascinating just the ability for companies to be able to start accessing the tons of data sources they might not uh, previously been able to handle. And now because of this type of framework, you start seeing new things and new business insights that are coming out of it. So insights, right? It's a key piece of this. Now, so you've kind of mentioned a couple names I've heard, you know, MapReduce, I've heard Spark, like, you know, I, I think one of the reasons why I was passionate about creating this whole process and things is, is ultimately there's so many different tools right now that you could use to try to solve these problems. So, you know, obviously you have MapReduce, you have uh, Spark, and I would say those are primarily the two main contenders in a batch-oriented state. But now there's this whole world of real-time or real-time streaming. And so, you know, you have what, Spark Streaming, you have Storm, you have Flink. You know, what, what other things are, are, are out there, right? I mean, there's just a couple ones that I've run through through my research. Well, those are definitely the key ones. And those, okay. those are the ones that we're seeing the most... Uh, in a lot of the big companies and, and even small companies coming to us and, and so I think in some of our future videos we definitely need to define what do we mean by streaming because you know you have the traditional legacy world of the enterprise service buses that manage real-time data processing and, and how does that impact on the streaming as we call the real-time data sources coming in the big data world? And, yeah, yeah. And how, how do you decide between the two? And when do you decide to use you know batch processing versus the streaming? Or or how do you do both? You know, can you do both? Can you do batches within the streaming, which you absolutely can. Right. You know, so and then you enter the world of, of machine learning. You get the insights. You mentioned insights, and you haven't even talked about the machine learning. I know. So right. we absolutely need to talk about that. And you know, when it comes to the best craft beers in Colorado, I almost need a machine machine learning library, you know, with some good clustering to figure out where are those that, best yeah, beers. That that would be a fun little project. Of, I think uh, we should take. I think in. we should try that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was just reading an article. We'll have to. I'll send it to you about that and how to do that. But it's it's fascinating because we we've talked about some of these technologies, but what I find really fascinating is the fact that from an enterprise perspective, the need to solve both of them, right? I mean, it's not, we're no longer in a world where one size fits all, either batch or streaming, though some people are saying streaming is the way forward, but the ability to harness both, right, and, and use it in such a way that you know, I'm not spending a lot of time learning both concepts. And I think that's really where, like, if we look into the future, what I'm seeing with some of the great stuff around Apache Beam, and something that we'll definitely have on a show for later, how you know how you can start processing or building those pipelines to handle both batch and streaming in a, in a, a fashion that at least is scalable for an enterprise. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's definitely something that uh, we should talk about and why Beam is going to be important. 
for sure. But it is it is a, a big a big topic, and, and you know, again, it, what what is the beginning of any of those discussions is the data. Yeah, exactly. So Couldn't agree more. You you got to know your data. You got to understand what what is the data that you're working with, how are you getting the data, where are the sources, and that really dictates which platforms you want to look at and what yep. you want to talk about. And that's what I hope we cover today you know, in this blog series. And yeah. Oh, yeah. I also want to point out that my beers are a lot emptier than Nick's beers. All right, all right. So, so you bring up a good point and a good transition. Let's talk about the beers that we picked today. So uh, Denver Beer Company, established way back when, uh, has a wide variety of beers available. Uh, we've gotten two flights. They look very similar. We couldn't agree to share, so we created our own. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it, great place down on, on Platte Road. I think it's Platte Street. Downtown, beautiful yeah. downtown Denver. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, what do you I like? I really like the stout. Okay, yeah. The, my favorite so far is the yeah. stout. Okay, yeah, this one right here? Absolutely. Give it a shot, man. Yeah, yeah, that, that graham cracker porter is pretty solid. Yeah. Now, I we picked a wide variety. I mean, obviously, you have a graham cracker porter. Um, we have the pretzel. Yeah, uh, the pretzel assassin. Yep. I'm just looking at this again. We had the pilsner, the Kolsch that they had, as well as then the, the I'm looking at the names real quick. While you look at those, I'll have to Sunny say, Trench, that's the, what it was. Yeah, yeah it's it's my second favorite, as you can see from the, <laughs> Yeah, right. If you're using some good data points. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, um, good, good collection. Uh, you know, and it's funny because I was doing the research on this company, right? I mean, so they're, you know, this is their tap house. They've got the bottling house where they're out. They've got another one in Arvada, Colorado. Right, not uh, far from my house. Right, exactly. So next time maybe we'll go to your place. <laughs> but it, um, great collection of beers here. Um, you know, as we're talking about, the origin story of Denver Beer Co. is, again, just creating stuff out of their garage. Here's to you. Craft beer and data. Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly.